By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at the first episode in a series because this is a tournament report of the Staples online old school magic tournament held right here on Timmy Talks. And maybe you're wondering, Staples old school? What is that? Well, let me explain it to you. There is a group in Germany, the Hanseatic old school group from Germany, Hamburg, that had this idea. They wanted to come up with a format where you would celebrate the other 95% of the old school magic card pool. And what they mean by that is that everybody kind of plays mainly with the 5% of the best cards in the old school card pool. But that's kind of a shame, isn't it? Because there are so many cool cards. So how can you make a format to get those other cards out there? Well, simple. You just make a huge list of banned cards. And that's exactly what the Hanseatic crew did. They made a huge list of cards that were banned. Also cards that you had to ban after you banned some staples, if you know what I mean. For, for example, if you ban a Disenchant, that of course has a, a ripple effect on other cards. Maybe enchantments get a lot better, for example. So you have to think how those cards connect. And one of the things that Hanseatic is quite good in, in my humble opinion, is trying to find out, okay, how does it connect? How can we create a balanced format? And then they had a couple of tournaments and every time they retweet their list. And now I, you know, I asked Albert and the other guys from Hanseatic Old School, um, you know, can I just hold a Staples tournament? And they said, yeah, man, that sounds like a lot of fun. Try it out, tell us if you like the format. And you know, this whole online tournament is actually an experiment to see how that list is holding up. Now, if you wanna see the list, it's quite simple. I put a link in the description below. You can click on that, you can see the list. And also I've put a link to the tournament website uh, of this online event. So if you wanna see all the decks, you can also click on that link and you can check out the tournament website. Now for today, we're actually gonna look at a match that I've played against Albert from the Hanseatic Old School group, uh, crew, because he was uh, in my group. And he's playing a pretty cool list with Cyclone and Fungusaur and Circle of Protection Green. It's pretty sweet. More about that later though uh, when we start with the deck decks. And I am battling against him uh, with my own deck, Plane of the Basilisk. And this is a deck with Eureka, with Living Plane, of course with Thicket Basilisk. And uh, it's just really funny. It contains a lot of stapless cards. But before I start with the deck decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to first go to the games, check out the deck text later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. So click on there, it will take you straight to the game action. And in that description, you will also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you would like to join these tournaments and also support me as a content creator here on Timmy Talks, uh, please check out my Patreon page. And you can find that on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks, and I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent, Albert. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Albert. So this is green and white, and I mean, it really revolves around three cards. Maybe I could just start with the main card in the deck, I guess, that you would think about when you start building that uh, this, and that is Cyclone. So Cyclone is an enchantment for two green and two. It's a card from Arabian Nights. It's reprinted in Chronicles. This is a Chronicle edition. And it reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a wind counter on a cyclone, a wind counter, and then sacrifice cyclone unless you pay one green for each wind counter on it. If you pay, cyclone deals damage equal to the number of wind counters on it to each creature and each player. So, I mean, the idea here is simple, right? He's going to play cyclone, and then he's going to put wind counters on it. He's going to keep paying the mana for it. So everybody takes a damage. But of course, he's playing with Circle of Protection Green. So with your Circle of Protection Green, he can prevent the damage that he takes himself. But of course, this damage also goes to all the creatures. Now this is where Fungusaur comes in. So Fungusaur is a 2-2 creature for one green and three that simply reads whenever Fungusaur is dealt damage, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So the Fungusaur is gonna grow together with the Cyclone. So it's really cool. So every turn you take an extra damage from the Cyclone, but also the Fungusaur gets an extra plus one plus one counter. So it keeps growing with the Cyclone. And of course the opponent, me in this case, is gonna take the damage. He is not gonna take any damage because he's playing with COP Green. Now um, he's got some little tricks to try to find the cards that he needs because in every combo deck, 
That is basically the toughest part of it, right? How can you find the cards that you need? Well, he's playing with Natural Selection. Natural Selection, a card from green, uh, an instant that lets you, lets you sort the top three cards of your library. And if you don't like them, you can also just shuffle your library. You can also do this to your opponent, by the way, because it says target player. So you can choose your own library or that of your opponent. I think in Albert's deck, you're mainly going to do your own list, of course, and not that of your opponent. But there could always be a circumstance where that could be useful. I wonder how that's going to work with an online game like today, but we'll just see. Um, he's also got Untamed Wilds in the deck to kind of take out his lands. Make sure if you've got less lands in your deck. And of course, shuffle up again. You have a bigger chance of finding the, the Cyclone. Um, because the Cyclone and the COP Green, because those are the two key cards. Then besides that, he's also playing with, with Fog, uh, with Holy Day to kind of prevent damage. Against really quick low to the ground decks, I guess he's got the Drop of Honey. Drop of Honey, an enchantment from Arabian Nights for one green that, you know, during your upkeep destroys the creature with the lowest powers. That's really good against those uh, quick decks. He's also playing with two um, Forces of Nature, which is pretty cool. I love that. Um, so yeah, this is the list, and when I'm looking at this list, I'm a little bit worried. Why? My deck is mono green. I'm just going to repeat it. Mono green. He's playing with four Circle of Protections green in his deck. I mean, that could be a serious problem. Anyway, this is the list of, Al uh, of Albert. Now let's take a look at my list, Plane of the Basilisk. And here we see my deck, Plane of the Basilisk, and oh boy, it was so much fun to play with this deck. Um, this deck is built around a little combination of card synergies here. Um, you have, of course, your Thicket Basilisk, and you can put a lure on it, right? That's as old as the Road to Rome, right? That combo. One of the first combos, I guess, in old school ever. So in case you don't know, Thicket Basilisk, every creature blocked by it, every creature it blocks, non-wall creature gets destroyed. And then when you play lure on it, it means every creature of your opponent has to block it. So if you put a lure on the thicket and you attack with it, you can kill every creature on the side of your opponent, unless, of course, it's tapped because it attacked a turn before. Now, um, this works together really well. It gets really insane if I manage to play a Living Plane. So Living Plane is an enchant world from Legends that simply says all lands are now 1-1 one, one creatures. They're still, you can still tap them for mana, they can still do their thing, but they're now also creatures. In, they also have summoning sickness, by the way. That's an important thing to note. So if I have my thicket with lure, and then I drop my living plane, I can attack with my thicket, and I destroy all those lands. Now, the cool thing is, besides my thicket basilisks, I've also gone for a theme with rampage. So rampage, I just got to laugh a little, because it's one of those abilities that never really seems to work, uh, but it has potential. So rampage means that if you're a creature, for example, the Craw Giant has Rampage 2, that means for each creature blocking it after the first one, it gets a plus 2, plus 2 bonus. So if I would put a lure on my Craw Giant and attack with it, all those 1-1 uh, one, one lands have to block my Craw Giant, and for each creature after that first blocker, it gets a plus 2, plus 2 bonus. So in a way, it also works like the Thicket that is going to destroy all the creatures. Um, and the same thing can be set, set for the playset of Wolves that's in this deck as well. And then, of course... Uh, because it, this is pretty costly to do all of this, I have decided to play with Eureka because Eureka wasn't on uh, the band list. So I thought, oh, that's cool. I can play Eureka. So Eureka, of course, a sorcery from green, also from legends um, that allows you to uh, play out your entire hand while well, all the permanents at least. So how um, Eureka works, you can start and you can play out a permanent from your hand. And then you pass the turn, or then your opponent, you don't pass the turn, but your opponent gets to play a card from his or her hand. Then it's your turn again, then your opponent's turn, then your turn again. Now, the cool thing is, if your opponent says, I have nothing left to play out, or I don't want to play anything else out, uh, Eureka doesn't stop. It simply gives you the option then again to play something out. So even if your opponent has nothing to play out, you can still dump your entire hand. You can just play out all your permanents. That includes lands as well, as long as they're permanents. So I can play out my forces of nature. I can play out my living plane. I can play out my thicket. I can play out my lure. I can just do everything. So the dream of this deck, of course, is to have that um, that wild growth. So you ramp up a little bit, have a turn three Eureka, and then it, you can go thicket, living plane, lure, or craw giant, living plane, lure, or the wolves with the lure and the living plane. Anyway, that kind of combination of cards, and then you can destroy uh, the lands. Now, I think... You know, we've seen the deck of Albert, and the problem, of course, for me facing that deck or the four Circle of Protections green. Now, there is a little bit of, of a silver lining 
Maybe I can go really fast with the Eureka and destroy all his lands before he can do anything. Another plus for my deck is that Living Plain makes my creatures 1-1, one, one, um, but even though they're forests, they're not green. They're just colorless, just like even though it's a green land, which is kind of weird, a forest is colorless, but it, it, it doesn't become a green creature. You know what I mean? So you cannot use your circle of protection to prevent the damage. So that's kind of nice. Another thing that's working against me, besides, of course, the circle of protection green, or the is the drop of honey in the deck of Albert. Drop of honey living plane is actually a pretty good combination um, because when two creatures are tied for the, for the power, um, the, the owner of the drop of honey can choose. So if you only have lands in play and, we, and they're all 1-1 one, one creatures and Albert has a drop of honey, he can choose to first destroy my lands. So that's um, pretty problematic. So, I mean, looking at this matchup, I think it's going to be insane. I think it's going to be just really crazy because we both want to do something weird and fun. And um, I can see it go totally wrong for me, but I can also see it work. So I I'm just going to go for 70-30 because I'm just kind of intimidated by the COP greens. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Anyway, we've looked at the deck of Albert. We've looked at my deck. That only means one thing. We are ready for the match. Here we go. Game number one, here we go. On the left, we have Albert. I believe he's on the play. He's playing his green-white Cyclone deck with Fungosaurus and Circle of Protections green. Starting here with a Wild Growth. Passing the turn back to me. I'm playing Plane of the Basilisk, a mono green deck that uh, revolves around Thicket Basilisk, uh, Lure, a Living Plane, and also I play with Eurekas and have a Rampage theme. So there's just a lot going on in my deck. Actually, in Albert's deck as well. And yeah, this, this is going to be really interesting. Both of us starting with a turn one Wild Grove. Albert now taking his second turn with the Plains. Let's see what he can do. Tapping three. There's a COP green. Okay, so this is already pretty problematic for me. Remember, my entire deck is mono green. And I mean, I do play with Desert Twister, but that's of course a very expensive card. But that's the only way that I have in the deck to get rid of the COP green. Playing another Forest. Probably just going to pass. I don't think I have a lot to do at uh, three green. So yeah, passing your turn here to Albert. There's a City of Brass, gonna tap four, so gonna take a point of damage. Oh, there's a Fungusaur. So Fungusaur, a two, two creature, and whenever it uh, takes damage and doesn't die, it actually gets a plus one, plus one counter. Tapping four here. Okay, there's the Wolves. So this is a, a two, four creature with Rampage from Legends. So I mean, this can at least block the Fungusaur. And I do remember Albert has the Circle of Protection green. So that's not going to do much for me uh, as an attacker. There's another mana here, another land for Albert. Is he going to find that Cyclone? That's a big question. Nope, he's not just passing the turn. So we're both kind of uh, in a stalemate position, playing another Forest. Enough mana to, for example, cast a Thicket. Going to tap three here. Okay, there's a Lure. Now he has to block with the Fungusaur. So this is a great way for me to kind of get rid of that Fungusaur. So Lure in that sense is also removal kind of in green. Passing the turn back here to Albert. And of course Lure works really well on Rampage creatures because remember with Rampage for each creature uh, after the first that you block it with it gets a bonus. If it's Rampage 1, just plus 1, plus 1. If it's Rampage 2, plus 2, plus 2. Oh, there we see the Cyclone. Yeah, now I'm in, uh, I'm in trouble. So Cyclone, and enchantment from uh, Arabian Nights. This is a copy from Chronicles. And uh, every turn you put a wind counter, every upkeep, Albert's upkeep, you put a wind counter on the Cyclone. And then you've got to pay one green. If you don't, it gets destroyed. So one green per wind counter. And it deals one damage to every target for each wind counter on it. And of course, Albert has that COP green, so he's not going to take damage. There's the attack, by the way, with the wolves. So Albert preventing it with the COP green. But because he uses the uh, City of Brass, he is taking a damage. He's on 18. Oh, there are more wolves. Yeah, wolf tribal. I mean, that's all I can do, isn't it? Yeah, and now you can see you're putting the one wind counter on it and we both take a damage and all, also our creatures take a damage. Now, luckily for me, uh, the creatures I have have four toughness. And of course, Albert prevents the damage, by the way, with a circle of protection green, so he takes no damage. I mean, for Albert, this is pretty good. Basically, his deck is kind of doing what he wants to do. And he's got the COP green to prevent the damage, so I can't really attack. Well, I, I'm gonna attack, but he can just tap to prevent the damage. 
I mean, hopefully for me, he's not going to find a lot of green mana. So I'm tapping five here. There's a thicket basilisk. So another two, four hitting the board. Attacking here with everything. He's going to prevent the damage with the COP green. So, I mean, my strategy is pretty straightforward here, right? I know that he's got to tap more and more mana into his own cyclone, meaning he's got less mana left for the COP green. And I'm just going to keep attacking. So that's two damage for me here. He's also going to prevent the damage to himself, it seems, with the COP green. So I'm going to drop here to 17. And now Cyclone has two counters on it. So next turn, three counters. After that turn, if Albert has enough mana, and I think he does, he's going to wipe the board, a one-sided Wrath of God for him. Oh, there's a Wild Grove. That's bad news. He is going to take a damage, though. But this Cyclone, Circle of Protection Green for Albert is doing exactly what he wants it to do. And I'm in serious trouble here. At least I can swing in for a little bit of damage. Well, he still actually he put the Wild Grove on, so that one force can tap for two, so I can only deal two points of damage despite attacking for six here. Yeah, it's, it's looking pretty bad. I mean, if I have a Desert Twister, that could kind of save me a little. There's the attack. Yeah, so I'm going to tap for two mana, going to prevent two creatures from dealing damage, meaning it only takes two damage. Going to drop to 15. Oh, this is so bad. Even if I have a Desert Twister, like, I guess you would take away the Cyclone, right? Gonna tap. Oh, there's a Force of Nature. Gonna tap six here for the Force. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea, to be honest. Uh, I guess I'm just doing whatever I can do. So now he's got to tap three for it. So look at it. It has to tap both of his Forests. And of course... Uh, Putting a mana, I think that mana wasn't necessary for the COP green because he's got one green floating, right, that he could have used. But anyway, doesn't do it. Good news for me because now I've got a lot of creatures. Now remember, next turn, everything is going to take four damage. So I'm going to lose my wolves and my thicket. But at least for now, I can attack. And I mean, he only has that one uh, City of Brass, of course, also attacking. Oh, he's playing a Fog. Oh, man, that's so annoying. He's playing a playset of Fog and a playset of Holy Day. Oh, man. I do love the fact, Albert, that your deck is doing what it's doing, but I remember this game. I was like, oh, are you kidding me? This guy plays COP Green? Nobody plays COP Green. Oh, man. Anyway, dropping another Forest. Two cards in hand. I'm probably just going to pass back here to Albert. It's looking very, very good for him. Next turn, the Cyclone will go to four. I'm going to lose all my creatures except for the Force of Nature. And Albert doesn't care much for the Force because he's got the COP green. So untap upkeep. Wind count four. It's going to pay four mana to keep it around four green. Going to tap the white to prevent the damage. So four damage to everything. So I'm going to drop to ten. Look at all my creatures. No, no. Oh, man. Magic. What a tough game. I had so many cool plans for my deck. There's another Wild Grove here. And, of course, Albert keeping that one land untapped to prevent, to use his COP, uh, I mean, against the Force of Nature, prevent the damage. There's the attack. The eight eight's got to tap it. At least he takes the damage from the City of Brass. Yeah, that's about it. And another problem for me as well is that Albert's got a lot of green, so he can continue paying for that uh, Cyclone. I'm also playing another Wild Grove. Passing the turn here back to Albert. Untap, upkeep. Then he's got to pay for it, so... There we go. So he can tap for six, one mana floating to use for the COP green. So this is really perfect for Albert. And now I'm going to take five points of damage as well. So I'm, my life total is halved. I believe exactly going to drop to five. It's interesting to see, by the way, that Albert keeps kind of tapping that planes for the COP green, which is not necessary. Doesn't matter much though in the, in the match at the moment. So I'm going to continue paying for the force and knowing that I'm going to die next turn. Nothing I can do. I mean, at this point, remember, this is game one. At this point, I'm just playing to get more information. 
Oh, there's the desert. Oh, so I had the desert kind of showing it to him. That there's nothing I could do. If I would have chosen not to pay the upkeep, I would take the damage from the force and die. Then I could have played the desert, uh, the desert twister. But anyway, uh, wow, Albert, you're winning here. It's funny, by the way, to use a desert twister to destroy a cyclone. That's kind of off flavor. So that it's a good thing that it didn't happen. But Albert, man, your deck's working like a charm. But anyway, this is just the first game. So we're now going to dive into our sideboards and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm on the play after losing that first one. And I have to say, Albert's deck is looking very, very good against my deck. I mean, COP greens, are you kidding me? That's like super tough for me. Also in combination with that Cyclone, what we saw in that first game. I mean, what, I, what I'm hoping for, for me, is a really explosive start, like an early Eureka, perhaps, kind of overwhelm the board, or a living plane that allows me to kill the lands on the side of Albert. Oh, look at that. COP green, and he's ramping up like crazy with two wild growths already on both of his savannas. So I'm in a pretty bad spot here, playing a forest. Okay, tapping three. What can I do for three in my deck? Not a lot. Let's see. Oh, there's a Basalt Monolith. So it's an artifact. You can tap it for three. And then uh, if you pay three, you can untap it. So yeah, it could be good. So next turn, I guess, has to be my big money turn. There's another uh, land here for Albert. I see his life total is still on 12, by the way, but it should be 20. Oh, it's beautiful to see this card. Wall of Ice. 07 Wall. Art by Richard Thomas, and uh, there's a mage like in the Wall of Ice. And he's tapping here. Oh, there's a Eureka! Wow, this is sweet. Eureka, the card from Legends. Still have one mana floating from the Basil Monolith, gonna play out a Wild Grove. Then, of course, it's Albert's turn. The nice thing with Eureka is that you can uh, put the permanence on the board that you wanna play with Eureka. And then after Eureka has resolved, you can choose the order of how you want to play them out. Look at that. So there's the two four wolves, the thicket, and the lure. Okay, this is what I... Oh, and the living plane. This is what I want to do in life. The problem, of course, here is that Albert has that COP green. So he can just sink all his mana into the COP green and prevent the damage. So my trick is probably not going to work, but still it's really cool to kind of show it to you. Because this is the intention of the deck. But of course, I don't have a COP green in my mind when I'm building my mono green deck. I do believe I have Tranquilities. But Tranquility, again, also works against me because of the lure and the living plane. So it looks like Albert is not doing all that much with the Eureka. So at least that's good news for me. Could have had, for example, a Force of Nature in hand. That would have been quite painful with that COP green. But that's not the case. So the Eureka has now resolved. And remember, all the lands are now 1-1 one, one creatures. That means they also have summoning sickness when they come into play. So you cannot tap them for mana directly. You've got to wait an entire turn cycle. And I have one mana floating uh, as well. Could this uh, choose to tap? The forest have two. And then with that one mana, I have three mana available to untap my Basalt Monolith again. It looks like we're kind of discussing maybe how the Eureka works or the interaction between Lure and Thicket and Living Plane. Ooh, forgetting to untap here, it seems. Because I'm just taking away that mana. I could have used the land with the Wild Grove. Exactly realizing it now, I guess. Asking Albert if that's okay. And it usually is. We're, we're like These online tournaments, especially like these funny ones, we're, like, we're very friendly towards each other. Of course, we do try uh, to play our best possible magic. And here we see Drop of Honey. This is actually pretty bad for me. Oh, I talked about this a little bit in the deck deck. Drop of Honey, a card from Arabian Nights, Enchantment, one green. And uh, during your, the upkeep of Albert, um, uh, the creature with the lowest uh, power gets destroyed. And if it's tied for power, then Albert gets to choose which creature is gonna get, uh, gonna, going to be destroyed. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. Going here in for an Alpha, well, Alpha Strike, but going in with all my creatures here, by the way. I mean, I guess if you're Albert, you can just tap your lands, prevent the damage, and block with the wall, and you're fine. I mean, maybe you take a little bit of damage from the lands, but that's about it. 
So the wall has to block here. Exactly, he's gonna tap the lance, I assume, for the COP green. So he's going to prevent the damage. Oh, and we also see a Holy Day, making it even worse. So what I wanted to say is if the creatures are tied for a power, then, um, then Albert gets to choose. And of course, he's going to choose to destroy one of my lands. I'm playing out of forest here, by the way. Not quite sure if that's the right way to go. And uh, another thing here, the Wall of Ice shouldn't have died because Thicket says non-wall creatures. It doesn't matter that much because now it's Albert's turn. And then the Wall of Ice would have died to the Drop of Honey. So it's kind of actually bad for me because now he's probably going to kill one of my lands. Yeah, going to kill that untapped forest. Oh, of course, the forest of the wild grove. Yeah, that makes more sense. And I'm not quite sure if playing out my forest here is a good play from my side either, you know, because as soon as all the creatures are gone, then the drop of honey also disappears. And maybe the quicker my lands are gone, Albert will have to be forced to kind of start eating up his own lands. So that, that could be a silver lining for me as well. So for now, it looks really bad, <laughs> you know, but maybe I can find a way. He's got a cyclone in hand here. Could play it out. I mean, it would mean that it would take some extra points of damage next turn. And Cyclone, actually, he doesn't want to because Cyclone, of course, can wipe out all the lands because it deals one damage to each creature. Cyclone and Living Plane, that is sick. Anyway, passing the turn back to me. And that is what I love when you're playing tournaments like this where you simply ban all the staples is you get these new interactions that are so interesting. You kind of go deeper into the card pool, into the game. You get to see what the game basically was intended to be, I think. Anyway, Albert here playing a fog, preventing more damage. So yeah, he's still on 20, I believe. I haven't been able to deal him one single point of damage. And now he's gonna untap upkeep, destroy one of my lands with the drop of honey. Exactly, only two forests left. The good news for me though, is that Albert is not really doing anything else. So yeah, he's, he's destroying my lands, but at a certain point he will have to start eating up his own lands. And I can slowly start dealing damage. And maybe at the end of this whole thing, I will hopefully have some good cards in hand. I will have my Basil Monolith and my Living Plane still on the board. And he will only have two COP greens, which is still really good against my deck. But, you know, it's something. So Albert here, it seems he's really in the tank, thinking about what he can do. He could consider maybe attacking with his own lands, at least with one of them dealing some damage. I mean, he's got enough mana too. He only needs one untapped land with the wild growth on it to prevent the damage from my creatures. Let's see what's going to happen here. Two cards in hand and of course an untapped basil monolith and two forests. So I've got five mana. I've got a lot of five drops in my deck. The thickets, of course. Oh, the wolves are actually a four drop, two green and two. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank, maybe thinking, do I want to play out another land? Should I just attack with everything? I know when I play out a land, I'm just extending this situation. Is that good? That's the big question. Okay, tapping five or what am I going to play? Another thicket? Yep, another thicket. And I think that's good because at a certain point, all the lands will be destroyed and he can no longer use his COP green. And then I can finally start dealing a little bit of damage at least. So he's going to tap the greens for the COP. And, oh, there's a fog. Okay, there is the fog. Oh, man. Like, Albert's deck, remember, four holy days, four fogs. We're in for a long game. Untap upkeep, and he destroys one of my lands again. Two cards in his hand. What can he do? I mean, I'm on 20. I believe he's also still on 20. So not on 12 like his dice indicate. That's from the previous game. Passing the turn back to me. Bezel Monolith, of course, stays tapped. Got to pay three to untap it. Going to draw into card number two. I mean, the problem for me as well, if you look at my deck list, <laughs> I mean, my deck is very mana hungry. And I only have one force at the moment and a tap ma monolith, so that's not great. So he's going to prevent some more damage here. 
Will I finally be able to deal a point of damage? Yeah, I think I will. Or is he going to chump it here? Why would he? Yay, I'm dealing a damage. He's on 19. But better, better news here is that now uh, Albert is going to destroy my forest, right? But then next upkeep of Albert, he will have to start eating up his own lands. I'm looking forward to that. You know, that is, that is the big goal here. Three cards in hand for Albert. I mean, he's probably not happy with this situation. Because what happens now with the drop of honey, every turn he's going to lose a land. At a certain point, he won't have enough or no lands, actually. And then I can start dealing him a little bit of damage, at least, with my creatures. Three cards in hand here. Look at this, attacking with everything. Of course, now he can still prevent it with the COP uh, green because he has the lands for it. But he's going to start losing lands next upkeep. Yeah, tapping everything, pumping it in the COP greens. I mean, that is as expected. And now he's going to get into trouble. Untap upkeep, kill the creature with the lowest power, which is one of his lands, losing the planes here. Going to draw for turn. Is he simply going to keep feeding planes to his drop of honey? That is, that's, I mean, that's not a winning strategy, I think. I mean, Albert is still on 19, so I mean, he can take some damage. Yeah, going to pass a turn here on tap upkeep. Here we go. Draw step. I think what I need to do is just build up a hand again and keep attacking. So he's going to prevent the damage. It's going to be his turn. He's going to lose one of his lands. Exactly. There we go. I'm, I have hope again. You know, after seeing that COP green early in this game too, I thought, oh man, I'm just going to be slaughtered again. But, I mean, this is not too bad. Ooh, it looks like he's changing his mind, though. Is he considering maybe chumping the creatures? I think that's what he does. So he is deciding to chump instead. It kind of makes sense because then with your drop of honey, you can start destroying one of my creatures. It does mean, of course, that the next turn you're going to take four. So we're now in the upkeep of Albert. I mean, this kind of makes sense, right? The problem for, for, for Albert here, well, it's not really a problem, but he, he's going to have to take a little bit of damage. Hopefully, I have lands in hand that can keep feeding lands to the drop of honey and keep attacking with my army. So let's see if I've got a land. First attacking for four. Yeah, dealing damage. Hey, dropping a land. Okay, yeah, this is what you want to do. Because now if it's Albert's turn, he's going to destroy one of my lands. Exactly, but he doesn't want to play out a land either because then it's going to be destroyed by his drop of honey. Oh, man, what an interesting situation here. This is a first for me. Let me know in the comments if you've ever seen a game like this. This is a first for me. Look at that. He's playing his forest probably to chump my attackers here. Untap upkeep. Gonna attack, of course, gonna deal. Actually, he can jump. No, he cannot tap it for mana because it's got summoning sickness. So he has to take two, exactly. He wanted to, to block, tap, and use the COP green, but he can't. The question is, do I have a land now? I'm in the tank here, but I think if I have a land, I should play it out. I should try to keep feeding it. It is risky, though. Look at that playing a land because at a certain point... If I'm not able to kill him with this strategy, I will probably run out of lands. And my deck is very mana hungry. Anyway, let's first see if Albert is going to do something. Is he going to... He's going to play out another land. Wow. This is so interesting. Attacking. Yeah, just attacking. And he's going to chump. He's going to take two. Drop to 11. So as long as I can keep feeding it lands, I'm going to deal two damage a turn. Another forest. Passing the turn, going to lose the force again to the drop of honey. <laughs> oh, look at Albert. We're in this pattern now. Oh, that's fantastic. Attacking again. Passing the turn. I mean, Albert's now on nine, by the way. So as long as I can 
continue feeding forests, I should be okay. There's another forest by Albert. So we're just, we're going to run through our lands this way very, very quickly. I didn't realize I built like a land destruction deck. Well, actually, I did realize with the living plane and the lure, that was the idea. Oh, man, this is so funny. Albert now on seven, playing another forest. Of course, that's going to die. I wonder how many forests I still have. Albert also playing out quite a lot of lands. Again, the attack, going to put him on five. I'm so close. Another forest. Okay, just a few more forests. Look at my graveyard. It's like a forest fire in my graveyard there. Another forest, untap upkeep, draw. Can I find more lands? That's the question. Attacking again. Can I find more? He's on three. I need another land. Oh, not playing out a land. It's going to destroy one of my creatures, right? Or not. A little bit confused. Not quite sure why Albert is reaching for his graveyard. Is he saying you've got this? He doesn't have any lands anymore. He's saying you've got this. Wow, that kind of, because he was on three, right? So he could have killed one of mine. I could have attacked, put him on one. Then if I had a land, it could still survive. Yeah, I think he could have pushed out one more turn. Anyway, I'm not complaining. I'm winning game two. That was kind of an interesting ending, or maybe I missed something. But uh, winning game number two here, that means it is 1-1, one, one, and we're going to go to an all-deciding game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's 1-1, one, one, the all-deciding game here. Remember, Albert is on the play. I do believe he just took a mulligan. Or are we drawing our first seven? Let's have a look. Anyway, Albert here counting his cards. I'm doing the same. Let's have a look. What will the future bring? That is the big question. Albert now, of course, has to decide first if he's going to keep or not. And he is going to keep. There's his Havana into a natural selection. Really cool to see this card. So he can look at the top three of his library. Put them in any order or can choose to shuffle them. And of course, he uses that to kind of find the combo pieces that he needs. COP green, cyclone, fungusaur. It's pretty good, I guess, when you're uh, playing a, a combo strategy. And I have to say, I don't really feel confident still. Because, I mean, COP green is obviously such a killer card against me. He's going to keep it on the top. That's a bad sign. It means he's pretty happy with what he has. And I'm passing the turn to me, so I get to start here uh, my game three as well. Both of us, of course, on 20. There's a forest. No wild growth, just a pass. Obviously hoping for the turn one wild growth so I can ramp up quickly and then maybe play Eureka early. Tapping. Yep, there's the wild growth for, uh, for Albert. So he is finding the growth. Passing the turn back to me. Second forest. At least no COP green yet. That's the good, uh, the good news for me. But I'm not doing much. Just playing the second forest. Passing the turn back here. Tapping three. Untamed wilds. Okay, a card from a legend that allows you to look up a basic land comes into play untapped. So basically it costs two, you know, considering it comes into play untapped, the land. And it's a nice ramp spell. Also allows you to shuffle the library. So Albert, of course... Kind of saw his, uh, the first three cards already because of that natural selection. So perhaps chose to put Untamed Wilds on the second spot, thinking I'm going to shuffle away that third card. And maybe he put the, uh, the Wild Growth on the top and then the Untamed Wild and then a third card that he, that he didn't want to draw into. So you can kind of manipulate your deck and how you do things, which of course is very important in a, in a combo deck like Albert has. So there's another forest from my side. Three green. Nothing happening still. Oh, man. I'm so slow. This is the deciding game. There's another natural selection by Albert. Oh, man. 
I wish I could do something here. Maybe I could play out the Wolves next turn to 2 4. That's 4 mana to cast. He's going to tap 4, by the way. Are we going to see a Cyclone here? Yep, there's a Cyclone. So the enchantment from uh, Arabian Nights. We saw that in game one. If he can find a COP green, I'm in really bad shape. So he's tapped out. So probably going to pass a turn. And I mean, I need to start doing something. Can I find maybe a forest play Eureka? That would be quite nice. Have another explosive like turn like we saw in game number two. Oh, I'm going to discard. Oh, no. This is so bad. This is the big decider, and I'm having to discard my poor living plane. Living plane cyclone, another really funny like situation that you can create that way. Oh, there's the COP green. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? At least finding a forest here, that's something. But I'm really in a bad position here. Remember, he can use the Cyclone in combination with COP Green to start dealing damage to me and preventing it for himself. Oh, man. Am I going to play something for four? I am. Okay, what am I going to do for four? Okay, there are the Wolves. So two, four. Rampage, two. Card from Legends. Oh, now I'm going to take damage. And of course, he can use a mana to prevent the damage. Exactly, that's what he does. So he's got the Savannah and Forced untapped. Going to draw for turn. Yeah, I have to say, Albert's deck is really working so far. And I mean, my plan, despite the fact that I was able to do that Eureka lure on Thicket, it's just really tough to play against the COP, I guess. So four lands, thinking about it. I guess I, I mean, attacking doesn't really help because he's got two lands to prevent the damage with COP green. I wonder what I'm thinking about. Maybe I'm thinking about, should I play another creature or not? Oh, living plane. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Living plane. Oh, this is ridiculous. So now Albert has a choice. He can pay uh, for the storm counters, right? The wind counters, I should say. Sorry, but then everything on the board, all the lands get destroyed. Decides not to. So basically my living plane has now destroyed the cyclone. That's something. That's what, it, uh, what it's done. But remember, all the lands are now 1-1 one, one creatures as well. So this is uh, pretty interesting. And also remember that the forests are not green creatures. So he cannot prevent the damage with the COP green. We see now Albert, by the way, playing a wild growth passing the turn. So not doing much. Am I going to turn everything sideways again? I've been playing super aggressive this entire match. Going to tap four instead. Oh, look at that. This is really good. The Rod of Ruin. There's a one-off in my deck, so with Rod of Ruin, I can tap it. It's an artifact, and I can deal one damage to any target. It's a Timmy on a stick. Got to pay three, I believe, to use it. Oh, I can start killing the lands. This is awesome. It's slow. It's not a great plan. But if it works, it's awesome. We see Albert playing out a land. Let's just hope he's got nothing good in hand. Keep my fingers crossed that there's not like a force of nature in there or anything. Actually, he does, yeah, he does have enough mana to play a force, but let's hope there's no force. And he can start killing the lands now with the Rod of Ruin. Playing a one-off Rod of Ruin, by the way, in my deck. Oh, man, this is awesome. This is amazing. This, th that's why it's so funny when, you know, when you're building these creative decks. Yes, you lose a lot, a lot of times. But when your deck works... It feels so good. Of course, I'm not there yet, but just living plain Rod of Ruin together on the board makes me happy. Makes me happy. Call me a simple man, but it makes me happy. And it's been in my binder for so long just to take it out and play it. It's just 
makes me happy. Anyway, let's see what Albert can do. Obviously, he's really into tank, realizing the situation that he's in. Is he thinking about just attacking with everything? I guess that's not really the way you want to you wanna go, right? Two cards in hand, passing to turn, I believe. I mean, realizing the situation he's in. I guess I'm going to start killing the lands that have wild growths on them or go for the duel and then the planes to take out the white side of the deck. There's another forest. Remember, those have summoning sickness still. I guess I should just do it now. Look at that, tapping the Rod of Ruin. What am I going to take out? Is it going to be a Wild Grove land or, yep, yeah, going to go for the duel? And I guess I should just pass the turn. It's exactly what I do. Yeah, this is a really good situation for me. I mean, this Rod of Ruin changes everything. Oh, oh, oh a Cyclone. Oh, he's going to play the Cyclone. Oh my God, he's playing the Cyclone. Oh, what a, what a match this is. This is insanity. Remember, Cyclone is going to wipe the board. All the lands will be destroyed next turn. That is insanity. I mean, I could go for an Alpha Strike here. I think that would make the most sense. Just attack with everything. Right? They're going to die anyway to that Cyclone because I guess that's the plan of Albert. And I mean, it kind of makes sense because I'm slowly killing his lands anyway with my Rod of Ruin. So, and in this way, he at least wipes the board. Look at that. I'm going to, do I want to play out a creature perhaps? I guess I want to play out maybe a thicket with those five lands, keeping those untapped. Anyway, attacking with these two. Let's see what he's going to do. Going to tap the forest. And so he's going to chump and prevent with COP green. Okay. Five lands left, tapping five. There's a thicket. And now it's still a problem for Albert because if he lets the Cyclone do its thing, I'm going to have two creatures on the board. I'm fine with that. He is doing it though. <laughs> oh, look at this. Cyclone destroying all the lands. This is huge. This is huge. Wow, Living Plane and Cyclone. What a killer combination. People, people, if you're, if you're looking at this, please tell me you're going to build a Cyclone Living Plane deck. There has to be a way to make that work. Maybe using a lot of like mana dorks, artifact mana and stuff like that. It would be so cool. Anyway, attacking here, putting Albert on 15. Remember that Planes has summoning sickness, so he cannot use it. And of course, Albert is going to lose his Cyclone because he cannot pay for the upkeep cost. Untap, upkeep, and now, of course, I can also attack with my land here. Ooh, going to play a Wild Grove. Attacking here is probably going to prevent the damage of one of the two creatures. Going to take two, drop the 13. I mean, Albert's in a bad spot all of a sudden. That Rod of Ruin changed everything. It's the MVP for me here in Game 3. There's another Forest. Remember Summoning Sickness? So I cannot start killing... His lands yet. He's going to prevent one. Take two again. Dropping to 11. But next turn, I've got Rod of Ruin back online. That is the most important thing here. That Rod of Ruin will start working again. I've got three lands next turn. Or three mana, I should say. That one force, of course, tapping for two green with the Wild Grove on it. Am I going to use my Rot? It's Rotting time! Oh, <laughs> ruining! The dreams of Albert here are not... It's going to use the green mana to cast the fog, so not going to take any damage. Passing the turn back to Albert because of that fog being cast. Playing a land as well. Yeah, there's nothing uh, Albert can do here. Wow. This is one weird match. It's interesting, but it's weird. Anyway, using my rod, killing the planes here. Going to play a holy day. And I mean, not sure why I'm attacking because of, uh, you know, the Holy Day's there. So it makes no sense, takes no damage. He's on 11 now, by the way. Finding a land, but that land has summoning sickness. 
And I think this is it. He's saying, you know what? You've got this. And I think he's right, because with Rod of Ruin and enough lands, I can continue killing his lands. He cannot tap them for mana because they have summoning sickness. So there was really no way out. This Rod of Ruin destroyed Albert here in game number three. But Albert, man, I have to say, I love your deck. Here we can see his deck. Beautiful deck picture, beautiful deck, beautiful game plan. It worked like a charm in game one. In game two, I think you could have squeezed out another turn and, and maybe, maybe you could have come back, who knows. But this game three, Rod of Ruin, really uh, was the MVP. Anyway, thank you for this match and also thank you for the great format you've made with your old school magic crew, the Hanseatic uh, old school crew uh, out of Hamburg, Germany. Again, if you wanna know more about their format, check out the description below for the link to the tournament website and the link to their list. And I'll also post a link there to their Facebook group. So you can just find all that information in the description below. And uh, next week, I will show you more matches from the Stapleist tournament. No longer my deck, other decks. Um, I, I have videos all the way up to the finals. And I can tell you, there are a lot of cool brews that are, uh, are passing this uh, video series. So I'm really kind of looking forward to show you all the craziness. Um, yeah, and I guess that's it for today. I'm still just a bit hyper uh, from this match. That game three was just completely uh, insanity. Uh, before you go, please take a moment to uh, like, comment, and share, and uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber yet. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, we also have our very own Patreon page, or I should say I have, because I mean, I'm not sure why I'm saying we, because I'm just me, but, I have my very own Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the information and find out how you can support Timmy Talks. And it already starts for just $1 a month. And for that $1, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord server. And you can also join into these great uh, online tournaments. So if you like these crazy, wacky tournaments, please consider becoming a patron of the show. And another nice perk when you become a patron is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als vinkertje somber gezien.